Don't be silly, Billy. All the engines on the Fat Controller's Railway are proud of being really useful. Gordon likes being the best express. Percy likes pulling the mail trucks on time. And Thomas likes being given a special special. One morning, Thomas arrived at Brendam Docks. He was excited. Today, I am to look after a new engine, tooted Thomas. That's a special job, my arty, smiled Salty. Here he is. The new engine was shiny orange and puffing with pride. I'm Billy, whistled the new engine. Let's go. Wait, Billy, tooted Thomas. We can't go yet. We have to wait for the Fat Controller. Why? huffed Billy. Because he tells us what we are to do, whistled Thomas. Billy didn't want to wait for the Fat Controller. He wanted to go. The Fat Controller arrived. Billy, he boomed, you have a very busy day. Billy beamed. First, you must take empty chicken vans to the farm and bring the chickens back to the docks. Then you are to deliver diesel fuel to the quarry. And lastly, you have to take coal to the depot. Yes, sir, bubbled Billy happily. Right away, sir. Thomas, you must show Billy how to be a really useful engine, added the fat controller. And he left. Billy... Thomas steamed. You must pull the chicken slowly and smoothly. I know that, sighed Billy. He pumped his pistons impatiently. Don't pump your pistons before you're ready to leave, whistled Thomas. It wastes coal and water. Billy puffed and huffed. And first, you must take on enough coal and water for a busy day, added Thomas. Thomas, huffed Billy. Stop telling me what to do. You are a very bossy engine. And Billy raced off. He thinks you're a bossy boiler, me arty, laughed Salty. Thomas didn't like being called bossy. He had promised the fat controller he would look after Billy. So Thomas chased after him. Thomas was pleased to find Billy at the farm. But Billy wasn't pleased to see Thomas. Billy, you must take on coal and water. Don't tell me what to do, Thomas, huffed Billy. You are a very bossy engine. And Billy steamed off. Silly Billy, you've forgotten the chickens, Farmer McCall called. Bother, Billy, wished Thomas, and he chuffed quickly off towards the quarry. Thomas was pleased to find Billy at the quarry, but Billy wasn't pleased to see him. You didn't pick up the chickens, puffed Thomas, and you still haven't taken on coal and water. Stop telling me what to do, Thomas, huffed Billy. You are a very bossy engine. And Billy steamed off. He's forgotten our oil, wheezed Mavis. Thomas was worried and he raced off quickly for the depot. Thomas was pleased to find Billy at the depot, but Billy wasn't pleased to see him. Billy had backed up to heavy trucks of diesel oil. They need diesel oil at the quarry, not the depot, said Thomas, and you still haven't taken on coal and water. Stop telling me what to do, Thomas! Huff Billy, you are a very, very bossy engine. Billy steamed off without the diesel oil. Thomas was worried, and he chased after Billy. Thomas was pleased to find Billy at the coaling plant. He was backing his trucks under the hopper, but he didn't see Percy there, and he biffed him right under the hopper. Percy was covered in coal from funnel to footplate. Watch out, silly Billy, Percy peeped. 
Oh no, tutored Thomas. You must be careful when you roll under the hopper, and you must take on coal and water now. Thomas, huffed Billy, stop telling me what to do. You are a very bossy engine. Thomas was very unhappy. He didn't want to be called bossy anymore. Do whatever you want, Billy, he wished. This made Billy very happy, and he raced off. Suddenly, Billy stopped. He had run out of coal and water. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. I haven't taught Billy to be really useful at all. Thomas shunted Billy to the water tower, and Billy's firebox was filled with coal. I know you think I'm a bossy boiler, tutored Thomas, but I've done all these jobs before. I can help you. Then no one will call you a silly Billy. So together, Billy and Thomas collected Farmer McCall's chickens and took them to the docks. Then they delivered the diesel oil to Mavis and Diesel at the quarry. And lastly, they delivered coal to the depot. Thomas was very tired. Goodbye, Billy, he chuffed. The fat controller will be very pleased you finished all your jobs. Thomas started to puff away. Thomas, bubbled Billy. You're not a bossy boiler. You're a really useful engine, and I really enjoyed working with you. Thomas felt very happy. Billy wasn't a silly Billy anymore. And Thomas had made a really good friend. Scarlowy storms through. In the summer, the high hills of Sodor are Scarlowy's favourite place. There are flowers and forests and fields full of sheep and farmers who wave as Scarlowy chuffs by. But in the winter, it's very different in the hills. There is rain and wind, and sometimes there are bad storms. One rainy day, Scarlowy was delivering trucks of slate. He saw a farmer up ahead by the tracks. There's an emergency, he shouted. A big storm is coming. We have to get the sheep down from the hills. We need the engines to help. Scarlowy wanted to help, so he puffed quickly away to the depot. He had to tell the other engines that there was an emergency. When Scarlowy arrived at the depot, his friends Reneus and Peter Sam were there. So was the thin controller. Scarlowy told him about the storm. First, you must collect the trucks and take them to the top of the hill, he said. Then pick up the sheep and bring them safely down the hill to the farmers. Yes, sir, peeped Reneus and Peter Sam. They couldn't wait to get started. As Scarlowy was being uncoupled from the slate trucks, there was a flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. Scarlowy was scared of the thunder and lightning, but he didn't want to tell his friends. He didn't want to look silly. Reneus and Peter Sam blew their whistles bravely as they puffed off to collect their trucks. Scarlowy tooted his whistle as hard as he could, but it didn't sound very brave at all. The three little engines arrived at the bottom of the hill with their trucks. Then there was an even louder roar of thunder. Scarlowy's wheels wobbled. He was very frightened. Here I go, puffed Reneus, and bravely he chuffed up the hill. I'm coming too, tooted Peter Sam, and he puffed off bravely after his friend. Scarlowy watched his friends disappear into the storm. He didn't feel as brave as the other engines. I'm too scared to go up the hill with them, Scarlowy puffed quietly. And with a sad puff of steam, Scarlowy reversed down a siding and hid. Scarlowy waited. 
He hoped no one would see he wasn't helping. At last, Reneus and Peter Sam came down the hill. Their wagons were full of sheep. Scarlowy watched the farmers unload the sheep. Then, Peter, Sam and Reneus puffed back up the hill into the storm. They were being very brave. Scarlowy felt bad. He wanted to help, but he was too scared. Peter, Sam and Reneus worked very hard. They puffed up and down the hill, bringing sheep safely to the farmers. Then there was trouble. Peter, Sam and Reneus had puffed up and down so many times, they both ran out of coal. There are still more sheep on the hill, wished Reneus sadly. What are we going to do, chuffed Peter, Sam. Scar Lowy looked at his two friends. They were very tired and very sad. Then he looked at the farmers. They were worried about the sheep. If a big engine like me is frightened of thunder, the little sheep must be very scared, Scarlowy chuffed to himself. I wanted to help the sheep, I wanted to help the farmers, and I wanted to help my friends. But I haven't helped any of them. I've let them all down. He felt terrible. Scarlowy puffed slowly out of his hiding place. Reneus and Peter Sam were pleased to see him. Did you collect lots of sheep? Peter Sam asked. We didn't see you, puffed Reneus. Scarlowy sadly told them what had happened. I was too scared of the thunder and lightning to go up the hill with you, he wished. So I hid and I watched you working. Because of me there are still sheep on the hill. So now I'm going up to collect them, he chuffed. There was another flash of lightning and a roar of thunder. But Scar Lowy didn't notice. He pumped his pistons and puffed off bravely up the hill. The lightning flashed around Scar Lowy and the thunder roared. But Scar Lowy wasn't scared. All he thought about was collecting the sheep and bringing them safely down the hill. Scar Lowy arrived at the top of the hill. The farmer was waiting. He was very pleased to see Scar Lowy. The sheep were quickly loaded into the trucks and Scar Lowy set off down the hill. It was very hard work, but Scar Lowy didn't give up. He chuffed up and down the hill until he had collected all the sheep. Scar Lowy felt very happy. I'm braver than I thought, he wished, and he puffed proudly down the hill for the last time. Reneus and Peter Sam were waiting for Scar Lowy at the bottom of the hill. Well done, they tooted. They were very happy to see him and proud of their friend. Three cheers for Scar Lowy, the farmers cheered. Scar Lowy smiled. I didn't think I could do it, but I could. The lightning still flashed and the thunder still roared. But Scar Lowy was the happiest engine on Sodor. Thomas and the Storyteller. It was an important day on the island of Sodor. A new library was going to be opened. Everyone was excited. There was going to be a ceremony with a brass band, a red carpet and boxes and boxes of books. All the children and all the grown-ups loved reading books and listening to stories. A famous storyteller was going to tell the children a special story. All the engines wanted to collect the famous storyteller, but the Fat Controller chose Thomas. Thomas was excited. You must show the famous storyteller the special sights of Sodor. Then she can make up a special story. She must arrive at the grand opening on time. 
Yes, sir, tooted Thomas excitedly. I know all the best sights. Thomas puffed over to Brendam Docks. He wanted to do a good job. Thomas arrived at the docks. He looked all around for someone famous. But all he could see was a lady with a notepad and a big box of biscuits. Are you the famous storyteller? Thomas asked. I like to think so, said the lady. You must be Thomas the Tank Engine. Will you please show me the sights of Sodor? Of course, tooted Thomas happily. So the famous storyteller hopped on to Thomas's footplate and Thomas puffed away. Pirate's Cove is not far from here. I shall take you there first, whistled Thomas. Pirate's Cove was full of caves and secret tunnels. Legend had it that pirates used to bury their treasure there. You could make up a jolly good story about pirate treasure, wished Thomas happily. But on his way there, Thomas saw James. James was in trouble. My coupling rod is snapped and I'm a guaranteed connection. My passengers have to arrive at Maithwaite Station on time. I'm sorry, Thomas puffed to the famous storyteller. I cannot take you to Pirate's Cove. I have to help my friend. So Thomas buffered up to James and his passenger train and chuffed away. Thank you, Thomas, cried James. Thomas arrived at Maithwaite just in time. The ruined castle is just over the hill, said Thomas to the famous storyteller. Now I will take you there. Thomas puffed as fast as he could. The ruined castle had tall turrets and a great big door. The old kings and queens of Sodor used to live there. You could make up a jolly good story about kings and queens, puffed Thomas happily. But on his way there, Thomas saw Emily in a siding. She was looking sad. She was taking flour to the bakery, but her whistle had broken. It wasn't safe to work without it. I'm sorry, puffed Thomas to the famous storyteller. I cannot take you to the ruined castle. I have to help my friend. So Thomas buffered up to Emily and took her to the bakery. Thank you, Thomas, cried Emily. Thomas arrived at the bakery just in time. Emily was pleased and Thomas puffed away. Misty Valley is not far from here, chuffed Thomas. Now I will take you there. He had heard Misty Valley was full of magic. You could make up a jolly good story about magic, puffed Thomas. But on his way, Thomas saw Percy. A river had flooded its banks. Percy was up to his buffers in water and his firebox had gone out. I'm sorry, whistled Thomas to the famous storyteller. I cannot take you to Misty Valley. I have to help my friend. Thomas chuffed into the water. The water came right up to his footplate. The famous storyteller had to stand on her box of biscuits to keep her feet dry. Thomas bravely buffered up to Percy and he pushed his friend out. Thank you, Thomas, cried Percy. But now it was time to go to the grand opening and Thomas was late. Cinders and ashes, wished Thomas. I haven't had time to show any sights at all. <laughs> 
Thomas arrived at the new library station. The FAC controller was waiting. We didn't visit any sites, puffed Thomas sadly. I had to take James's passengers to Maithwaite Station, Emily's flower to the bakery, and pull Percy out of the water. But it's a wonderful idea for a story, cried the famous storyteller. I shall write all about your day, Thomas, and how you helped your friends. She was very excited. She cut the red ribbon in front of the new library and declared it open. Then the children and the engines all listened as the famous storyteller told them the story of her wonderful adventures with Thomas and his friends on the magical island of Sodor. Emily's Rubbish Emily is a grand green engine. She's very proud of her big wheels and her perfect polished paintwork. One morning, Emily was very excited. The fat controller had told her to work with a new engine. I hope he's smart and useful, she wished. Emily met Thomas waiting at a signal. The new engine is waiting for you at the shunting yards, tooted Thomas. I can't wait to meet him puffed Emily, and she chuffed away as fast as her boiler could bubble. Emily steamed into the shunting yards to look for the new engine. He was the scruffiest engine she had ever seen. Hello, Emily, wished the new engine happily. My name's Whiff because I'm a bit smelly. You're going to help me collect rubbish. Emily was horrified. Come on then, she sighed. Let's get started. Gordon was talking to James and Henry in a siding. When they saw Emily with Whiff, they laughed. Hello, whistled Whiff. Who's your messy new friend with the funny whistle, Emily? snorted James. We smelt you coming for miles, wheezed Gordon grandly. My name's Whiff, whistled Whiff. It suits you, laughed Henry. Phew! Emily was very embarrassed. She hurried away. Whiff puffed after her. Up the line, Emily and Whiff passed more engines. When they saw Whiff, they all laughed too. Emily was tired of being teased. I must get away from Whiff, she huffed. Emily pumped her pistons. Wait for me, whistled Whiff. But Emily wasn't going to wait for Whiff. And soon Whiff was a long way behind. Emily was glad Whiff was gone. It's not my fault if he can't keep up, she huffed. Later, Emily had to wait for Elizabeth at a crossing. Where's this new engine? honked Elizabeth grandly. Uh, he got lost, wished Emily. No, I didn't, whistled Whiff cheerfully. Hello. Oh, sniffed Elizabeth. Aren't you going to introduce me to your new friend? But Emily didn't want anything more to do with Whiff. She chuffed away as fast as her pistons would pump. Wait for me, whistled Whiff cheerfully. Up ahead, Emily saw a branch line. Maybe if I puff down here, Whiff won't see me. And Whiff didn't see Emily. He puffed past on the main line. Emily chuffed all around the Fat Controller's railway. She tried to hide from Whiff. But still, everywhere Emily went, Whiff always found her. In every tunnel, and in every siding. At last, Emily escaped from Whiff. Thank goodness, she wished. Now no one will laugh at me for working with such a smelly engine.
Up ahead, Emily saw Spencer. He was very cross. I'm meant to be taking the Duke and Duchess of Boxford to an important lunch, huffed Spencer. But my way is blocked by all these smelly rubbish trucks. Flatten my funnel, steamed Emily. They were the rubbish trucks that Emily and Wift should have cleared earlier. Someone will have to move them, sniffed Spencer. Emily knew that was her job. I suppose I'll have to move them. Ugh, she shuddered. Emily buffered up. She pulled as hard as she could, but the trucks were much too heavy for her to move on her own. Just then, Gordon chuffed past. Can you help me move these rubbish trucks? tooted Emily. Me? snorted Gordon. Certainly not. Can you help me move these rubbish trucks, James? peeped Emily. Ugh! No, thank you, wheezed James. Emily was upset. I'm still waiting, huffed Spencer impatiently. If Wiff were here now, he'd be happy to help me, Emily sighed. He wanted to be my friend, but I wasn't kind to him. I must find Wiff and say sorry. Emily looked high and low for Wiff, but he was nowhere to be seen. Then at last she heard Wiff's funny whistle. Hello, Emily, whistled Wiff cheerfully. I wondered where you'd got to. I'm sorry I ran away from you, puffed Emily. That's all right, whistled Wiff. I'm just glad you found me. Let's go to work. Spencer was getting very impatient. Don't worry, Spencer, tooted Emily. Wiff is here to help now. Freeze my firebox, snorted Spencer when he saw Wiff. That scruffy engine can't move all these rubbish trucks. We're going to move them together, chuffed Emily. Oh, thank you, Emily, whistled Wiff. Spencer watched as Emily and Wiff coupled up to the rubbish trucks and quickly shunted them away. Spencer was very impressed. Wiff is a very, very useful engine, he wished. I know, bubbled Emily happily, and he's my new good friend too.